Hi, welcome back. We're in segment three of lecture 11, and the topic of this lecture is moderation analyses. In the first segment, we did a very quick, easy example. And then in the second segment, I showed you that there are actually some technical details that I glossed over in that first segment. So now, in this last segment, we're ready to do a full example uh, with all the uh, technicalities thrown in. Uh, so it'll be very detailed, um, but I think given that we've done the first two segments, I think we're ready to do this. As well, in the next lecture, we'll do more moderation analyses in R. So you'll see more examples than just this one that I'm doing in this final segment. So all we're going to do in this final segment is, again, just one example. Uh, but again, moderation analyses is pretty complicated. Uh, especially if we're doing everything correctly, including centering and dummy coding, uh, you'll see there's a, a, lot of, a lot of detail. Uh, so we'll just do one example here, and the next lecture we'll do more in R. So for this example, I'm going to go back to the faculty salary uh, data set. We're predicting faculty salary, and in this case, we're going to predict faculty salary from number of publications and from what department the professor is in. So we'll look at three departments, psychology, sociology, and history. And the question is, because we're doing moderation analysis, is does department moderate the relationship between publications and salary? That's the question we want to answer. We know that publications is positively correlated with salary, so professors who publish more make more money. But does that relationship vary as a function of department? That's an open question. That's an empirical question, as I say. And that's what we'll address with this moderation analysis. And we're going to do, we're going to address this question by doing all the steps that we've covered in this lecture. So we have one predictor that's continuous and one that's categorical. So we'll center the continuous predictor and we'll create dummy codes for the categorical predictor. We'll then create moderation terms, or some people will call them interaction terms. We'll then add them in to the regression in a second step to see if the moderation effect is significant. So this example has it all. <laughs> OK, so again, first step is center the continuous predictor. So that's just center publications. We did that in the previous segment, so I won't say any more. Uh, we also have to create dummy codes for the categorical predictor. So again, I'm going to use my own department as the reference. I'm in a psychology department, so let's make psychology the reference. There are three levels of this categorical variable, so we need, we need two dummy codes. Psychology, any professor in the psychology department will get 0, 0. And for history, they'll get 1, 0. Sociology, they'll get 0, 1. Here are some just descriptive statistics for this example, so you can get a feel for uh, what kinds of uh, things to expect in the, in the output. So again, we have professors from three different departments, and we're looking at their average salary and their average number of publications. So in the psychology department, the average salary is about 62,000. Uh, sociology, a little higher. History, uh, again, a little higher, but not quite as high as sociology. In terms of publications, it uh, looks like psychology has the highest average uh, with 18.9. Sociology is at 15.2. History is down at 11.1. .1. But the question here is not whether you know, those differences in mean publications are significant or whether the difference in salaries are significant. The question we're addressing here is, is the relationship between publications and salary, does that change as a function of department? So I'm going to start off with this graph to show you, basically to give away the punchline. Uh, what I'm plotting here is the relationship between publications and salary. And we know that there's a positive correlation from previous analyses with this data set. But what I'm showing you now uh, are three different regression lines. Each one represents a different department. 
So the steepest line, the red line, is the psychology department. So clearly, the psychology department has the strongest relationship between uh, publications and salary. The other two departments, the slope is, is not very steep. We, it might not even be a significant relationship. So it looks as if department does moderate this relationship. But we need to do the statistical test to see if the difference in these slopes is statistically significant. That's what the moderation analysis will do. OK, before we add in any moderation, we're just testing what I'm calling main effects. I introduced that phrase in the last segment. Uh, this is just the main effects of publications, the main effect of department. So there's no moderation in this regression model. Let's look at the uh, regression coefficients from that model. So the regression constant is 58,482. Again, that's the predicted salary when all x's are zero. Well, what is that in this example? Uh, publications is centered. That means that's for an average number of publications. And 0, 0 was the coding scheme I used for psychology professors. So what this means is a psychology professor, excuse me, professor who is publishing at an average rate relative to the whole sample, not relative to their own department, that's important, relative to the whole sample, we would predict that their salary would be $58,482. That's how to interpret the regression constant in this example. What about the rest of this? Uh, 925, what is that regression coefficient? Well, it's for publications, a one unit increase in publications. That's a predicted change in Y. So that's the slope relating publications to salary, just overall. The next regression coefficient is 10,447. This is the difference in predicted salary between psychologists psychology professors and history professors taking into account publication rate. That last part's important, important, taking into account publication rate. Let's go back and look at the descriptive statistics. The average salary for the psychology professors was 61,700. For history, it's 64,900. That's only you know, about $3,000 difference. Why then is this regression coefficient so large? Why are we getting 10,000? Well, because it's the predicted salary or predicted difference in salary between psychologists and historians taking into account publication rate. And remember, psychologists publish more than the history professors. That's why this difference is inflated because if Relative to the whole sample, a psychologist who's publishing at an average rate is below average for psychology. But in history, if you're publishing at an average rate in the whole sample, you're above average in your department. So that's why when we take into account publication rate, we're looking at historians who are publishing a lot and psychologists who are publishing a little. That's why this difference is inflated. It's a really important point, and if that's a little confusing, just go back over this a couple times. Uh, the, the notes on how to interpret those results, everything I just said, is, is right there in the next slide. This does take some getting used to. It, it, it's a little confusing. And that's actually the easy part. That, that was just the main effects. Uh, we haven't introduced the moderation effect yet. So let's look at the moderation model. Again, this is the, this is the, everything is in here. We've centered, we've done dummy codes, we've created interaction terms. This is as complex as it gets. Uh, so here's our model. The top row is the main effects. That's just publication centered. The two dummy codes that represent the categorical predictor of department. And then we have to have two dummy codes uh, or product terms with the dummy codes. It's just C1 times pub-centered, C2 times pub-centered. Uh, 
So now we have four predictors in this equation. Actually, sorry, five predictors in this equation. And now let's look at the regression coefficients. Again, the regression constant start there. It's the predicted salary when all x's are zero. So psychologists were coded as zero, zero. So that's, the, again, the predicted salary for a psychologist who has an average number of publications, but also taking into account these possible moderation effects. That's why it changed slightly from uh, the last output, but it didn't change much. The way to interpret these next three coefficients is exactly as we did for the last model. They're just the main effects. So let's focus on the last two rows. This is the important part. This is where we're, we're demonstrating moderation. And how do we interpret these, co these coefficients? Negative 960 tells me the difference in slope between the history department and the psychology department. If you think back to the graph, remember the red line was the slope for the psychology department. And then I forget if it was blue or green, uh, but it was one of the two for the history department and the sociology department. They were, they were right on top of each other. What that negative 960 is telling us is that that's the difference in slope between the red line and the other two lines. Is it's, this is $960 shallower. And if we look over at the t-test and the p-value, we can say that's a statistically significant difference in slopes. Moreover, what that means is we can say that the type of department you're in moderates the relationship between publications and salary. So publications seem to be a strong predictor in the psychology department, but not so much in history or in sociology. Uh, so again, the difference between the slope in the psychology department and the slope in the so sociology department, it, the difference is even a little bigger than it was when we were comparing psych psychology to history. And again, if we look at the t-test and the p-value, it's statistically significant. And again, I, I know this is a lot, and this is the first example we've done with, with a continuous predictor and a categorical predictor with multiple levels. Uh, so I added in these notes after, uh, after that, the output. So again, if, if this is a little confusing, I, I'm, I'm guessing this is new to most students in this course. Uh, so you might want to review this a couple times. Um, there's two slides that just run through everything I just said about the coefficients. And we could do further tests. <laughs> so we, we could do more than what I just did. Um, we could ask whether the slope for history is even significant at all. Right? Remember the initial graph. It looked pretty shallow. So perhaps it's the case that publications isn't even correlated with salary uh, if in, his, in the history department or in the sociology department. Um, and what if I wanted to compare the slopes for history and sociology. They looked pretty close, right? Uh, but nowhere in our output do we have anything that gave me a significance test to see if those two slopes were significantly different. Uh, if I wanted to compare those, I would have to create a new reference group. I would have to pick one of those two departments as the reference group, not psychology, and rerun the analysis. A little tedious, but typically you have some theoretical motivation uh, or a reason to pick one level of your categorical predictor as the reference. Uh, so typically, you only need to, need to run it one way. Uh, but this question about the slopes is an interesting one, and, and that's easy enough to test. That's called a simple slopes analysis. Uh, by simple slopes, it just means the slopes for the individual levels of the categorical predictor. Uh, instead of just the slope for publications, which is the overall main effect. Uh, so the way to do this in multiple regression is we don't want to enter a predictor now to represent publications. So pub-centered, we're going to take that out because that represents the main effect of publications. What we want to do is partition that effect 
into three effects, three slopes. So we'll create dummy codes that represent that. And here's the way to code that. So again, imagine your data frame looks something like this, where we have an identifier for professors, what department they're in, number of publications, then we centered publications. Um, and then we create these simple slope codes. Uh, so this is a little bit different from dummy coding. What we do is take group codes. So for psychology, if you're in the psychology department, I'll give you a one. And then I'll just multiply that by pub-centered. Uh, so SS1 is pub-centered times one for psychologists. Likewise for SS2, that represents pub-centered for sociologists and SS3 for historians. Now we can just run the regression analysis. We need to enter in the initial dummy codes. So C1 and C2 represent the main effective department. But then instead of entering in pub-centered, we enter in these th three new codes, SS1, SS2, SS3. Then in the output, what you see are regression coefficients for the psychology department, for the history department, and for the sociology department. Now these are not difference scores, right? These aren't differences in slopes anymore because we took out the main effect of publications. So these are the actual slopes for each group. So the slope for psychology is $1,372, and that is significant. And the slope for history is 411, and it's not significant. Slope for sociology, 257, not significant. Again, to get a feel for the relative strength of uh, the relationship between publications and salary, let's look at the standardized. So in psychology, you've got a nice, pretty strong effect of 0.43. But then look, in history and sociology, not much going on at all. Uh, so you know, close to zero. And if you remember the, the initial graph, you know, there were really shallow slopes. So final interpretation of this is, again, in the psychology department, number of publications is a strong predictor of salary. But that's not the case if you're in the history department or if you're in the sociology department. Exactly what I just said in, in that slide, so I can skip ahead. Um, to the final interpretation, department moderates the relationship between publications and salary. And again, if you just look back to the initial graph, it's very clear in the graph, right? So that slope of the red line is significant, and the slope of the other two lines, not significant. And more importantly, the difference in slopes between the red line and the other two lines is significant. And that's evidence for moderation.